Today's exercise is going to be the hip hinge. You will need a piece of equipment for this exercise, like a PVC pipe or a broom handle. Whatever you use, it's going to need to be at least as long as the distance between the back of your head down to your butt. So the key points we're looking for while we're working on this hip hinge. First of all, we're trying to maintain a neutral spine, which is what the broom handle is for. We're going to place that along three points. Back of the head, our upper back, and just above our foot. Throughout the motion, we're trying to keep that neutral spine by keeping three points of contact. For example, we're trying to avoid this happening. When we round our back, we lose a point of contact. So all the way throughout the motion, three points of contact. The second thing to focus on during this hip hinge is keeping a vertical shin. So I'm starting with soft knees, but throughout the hip hinge, my knees don't travel forwards, my shins stay nice and vertical. And then the third thing is the muscles we're using to initiate this movement. So the thing I want to focus on the most is keeping my glutes tight. And I focus on a horizontal motion of my hips. So reaching my butt to the wall behind me and then driving my hips forwards to come back up. So that ensures that we're focusing on our glutes as our prime mover. When it comes to practicing your hip hinge, you've got a few options. Because it's an unloaded movement, you can pretty much practice it every day, doing between three and five sets of five to 10 reps until you feel like you've kind of mastered the motion. When you feel like you're getting quite comfortable with it, you've got a few options. You could continue to use it as a warm-up exercise, which is something I encourage students to do before wrapping sessions, or you can start to load the motion, and there's lots of options for that, like deadlifts, kettlebell swings, and so on. Today's grappling movement is going to be the technical stand-up. There are a few ways to perform a technical stand-up based on how strong or how mobile first version begins from that seated position. We rock across to one butt cheek and we base an opposite hand and foot. We don't want the leg and the foot too far away and we don't want them too close. Once we have those base, we're going to keep one hand out in front and we're going to keep the other leg relaxed. Basing our weight between that opposite hand and foot, we're going to lift the hips and drag that base leg all the way through until we can step next to our base hand and go into that standing position. The key thing when we're doing that technical stand up is to allow our hips to turn towards the floor to bring that leg all the way through to finish. If you struggle to bring that leg all the way through in one motion, we can begin the same. One butt cheek, opposite hand and foot, lift the hips, and just bring the base knee through to come up into a half kneeling position and then into a standing position. The last progression is for when we can't base all our weight on one arm. So we're going to start the same. We're going to place our second hand down, and then we're going to hop up into that standing position. When it comes to practicing your technical stand-ups, you have a few options. You can work through the progressions of the simplest to the hardest options, and you can also just add these in as warm-up drills before a class. And the last thing is, if you ever find yourself sat on the floor, whether that's at home or at the gym, you can just build this habit of standing up in a technical manner. Today's striking movement will be the switch step. The starting position today is going to be a staggered stance. We'll stand shoulder width apart, and then I'm going to take my non-dominant side, so I'm right-handed, right-footed, take my non-dominant side, step that forward about the same amount, so about shoulder width in both directions. From this position, I take the weight onto the rear foot, I bring my front foot back on the ball of the foot, so I drag it across the mat, I step my other foot out at 45 degrees, and I transfer the weight back to that foot I lift my leg. The purpose of the switch step is to generate power and momentum for that front leg. If I was doing a technique like a kick or a knee off a rear leg, whether it's in the, my, like a high stance or even a, a slight boxing stance here, if I want to develop power off this side and use this leg, it's got a lot of room to go and move through. And I can also step and transfer my weight over to bring that leg in. But it's much more difficult to develop power off that front leg. Essentially what I'm doing is making my front leg my back leg just for a moment. If I had a line on the mat here and I was in this square stance that staggered, all I'm doing is taking my front foot back over the line and then stepping towards my rear foot over the line so I've turned that stance into an opposite position and then I can lift this leg. Now I don't want to turn a full rotation over to the other side. The idea is to keep my upper body in the same position and hide the motion. 
So our, our upper body stays here. I bring this foot back, other foot forward, and then lift the leg. In training, I can use this as a knee or as a switch kick, or just even to swing the leg to warm up. So I slightly speed it up. I bring the foot back, other foot out. Drag the foot back, step out 45 degrees, lift the leg. As with all striking techniques, you have to return back to a good position. And we can do this in two ways with a switch step. I can either come back into the same stance, or I can come back into the opposite stance. Going to the opposite stance is good so I can practice to move on each side, so I can switch on the other side as well. But for now, I'm going to return back to the same position. And the way we do this is I take my first two steps, and then I just pull the foot back down and come back into the same position. 